Hi, Mr. Brooks. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Zachary Freed. Thank you so much for letting me into your office. It's a great honor to meet you. Um, I just want to tell you before anything, I loved Ultimate Christmas Present. I watched it so many times when I was a kid, and I'm Jewish, so that's saying something. I really, I really liked it. So anyway, today I've come here to pitch to you a fantasy movie. Um, I've always been a huge fan of fantasy since I was a, a little boy because, you know, no matter what I was facing, no matter what problems I had, you know, I could always be transported into this other world and, you know, put myself in the protagonist's shoes and, you know, fight whatever these clear evils there are in, um, in his world and, you know, triumph over them. So anyway, the concept that I'm thinking of is that in a medieval drama, a young, musically talented, talented boy is orphaned, and now, with only his harp, must find that home is about the people, not the place, in a foreign city. So anyway, for this, um, for this movie, I'm thinking of four characters. Um, first, the protagonist is Car Carrigan Brommer. He is um, 15 years old. I'm seeing like Caden Boyd, that actor, playing as him. And anyway, he is um, incredibly musically gifted with the harp. Um, he's a very determined young man, and anyway, after his parents die, spoiler for you, um, in the movie, um, his parents do die, um, he becomes a lot more, um, um, a lot more closed off to people, but still very determined. The next character is Charles Gramier. He is the doctor that Kerrigan eventually, uh, like, ends up visiting, and, um, he, I'm seeing, like, Nick Nolte playing him. He's an old man. He's blind, um, and he takes care of, like, the orphan kids of, um, the city that Kerrigan finds himself in. And his assistant, another main character, is Lance Scar Lamont. I'm seeing, like, Jake T. Austin playing as him. And anyway, this character is, um, also, uh, like, around Kerrigan's age. He's, uh, has facial scarring, and anyway, he's a, um, very closed off from society. He's very, um, quiet, but very critical of people and does not like Kerrigan too much in the beginning of the movie. Then the antagonist is Basher, who is this bully type, you know, and who runs a gang in the city. So, the movie starts off in, you know, we're in this medieval land called Arasum, like medieval England. Anyway, we start off with Kerrigan, and he lives with his parents who are traveling minsters, so they don't have like a house. They go to town to town, you know, singing and getting money. And he's been taught the harp from a very young age. So anyway, um, he's asking, he's on um, this entire time when his family is traveling, he's always asking them like to buy a house and like a home because he feels like he sees all the other children has them, have them and he feels like his parents need to buy something. But his parents are like, no, it's all just about us, we're our own home. But Kerrigan never really understands this. He thinks that, um, you know, you have to buy a house to have a home. So anyway, one day when he goes out to practice his harp and gather firewood, in, in the woods, um, when he comes back, he sees his parents are dead, bandits killed them, and um, they set fire to their caravan, and the bandits actually see him, and that's the end of Act 1. In the next, in the next part, the bandits are chasing him through these woods, um, but he manages to hide, but he's completely lost now, and he manages to arrive at this city called Tarim, half-starved, and all he has is his harp. And anyway, he runs into Basher and his gang, and they um, immediately want the harp, but Kerrigan refuses, so they beat him up, and in the scuffle, the harp breaks, so they leave him behind. So now, Kerrigan becomes kind of a street urchin of this t um, place. He has to beg to get money. He meets a dog who um, he becomes good friends with. Anyway, he makes a promise to himself that um, he's going to make enough money to buy himself a home. Now that he doesn't have a family, he needs, he needs to have a home, a place to call his own. So anyway, um, he begins to steal now after this because he wants to make more money. And um, after w getting a lot of loot one time, he runs into Basher again and they um, steal his money and they knock him out. So anyway, when he wakes up, he's in Charles's clinic. He's a doctor and he's healing him. And anyway, Charles really likes him, but then Scar really doesn't like Kerrigan. So Kerrigan, as he heals, he sees that Charles has a harp. And anyway, he starts to play it one day, and he makes, and it's so beautiful that Charles and um, Scar start to cry, and they're like, please play for the patients here as a job, and we'll give you the harp. So Kerrigan plays for a little bit, 
and he gets the harp and he decides to leave now because he um he wants to go make money so he leaves and he starts to play the harp for other people in hopes of making a home so anyway, after making a lot of money the first time he does this outside um basher shows up to steal all of his money and that's where the fourth act ends and then basically and the, after that come when they come back scar turns out i've been listening to the show comes to his aid and then they manage to beat back basher and his entire gang so um, then um, they have a heart-to-heart -heart Scar and Kerrigan, and Scar tells him, you know, um, how he was an orphan, and how ever since Charles found him, Charles has been his home, and he feels happy whenever he's with him. And um, Kerrigan's really jealous of that, and he sees that there's a harp, con harp contest to win a job as a harpist. So anyway, he goes to it, he invites um, Charles, and um, he invites Scar to come, and anyway, um, he of course wins, and the Duke, who was hosting the thing, um, says like, I'll give you a job, I'll give you so much money, you can buy yourself a castle for a home. But then, that's when Kerrigan realizes, when he sees Charles and Scar out in the audience, you know, I have a home, it's with them at the clinic. So anyway, he refuses the Duke's offer, and he learns that home is about the people and not the place. So I'm thinking as a demographic, young boys to young men, 10 to 24, um, around that age, um, that um, I'm seeing also that the family is watching with the kids, um, so you know advertisers can advertise the kids and the parents, and the channels I'm seeing ABC Family, Disney, Nickelodeon, and anyway, they can advertise to these people. So we need these channels that target preteens to teens. So anyway, you can put like sports gear or. Um, you know, toys, things like that that will appeal to that age group. And I think we can make a lot of money like this. So thank you very much for having me in your office. Please consider my offer.